Here's the gist of it. For decades, physicists believed that the tiniest bits inside an atom were point particles, flying around the outside were the electrons, and inside were protons and neutrons, which were made up of quarks. But string theory says that what we thought were indivisible particles are actually tiny vibrating strings. It's nothing really mystical. It's a really tiny string. It either closes into its little circle or it has endpoints, but it's just a little string. In the 1980s, the idea caught on and people started jumping on the string bandwagon. Well, the fact that suddenly all these other people were working in the field had its advantages and its disadvantages. It, it was wonderful to see how rapidly the subject could develop now because so many people were working on it. One of the great attractions of strings is their versatility. Just as the strings on a cello can vibrate at different frequencies, making all the individual musical notes, in the same way, the tiny strings of string theory vibrate and dance in different patterns, creating all the fundamental particles of nature. If this view is right, then put them all together and we get the grand and beautiful symphony that is our universe. What's really exciting about this is that it offers an amazing possibility. If we could only master the rhythms of strings, then we'd stand a good chance of explaining all the matter and all the forces of nature. From the tiniest subatomic particles to the galaxies of outer space. This is the potential of string theory to be a unified theory of everything. But at first sight, in our enthusiasm for this idea, we seem to have gone too far. Because we didn't produce just one string theory, or even two. We somehow managed to come up with five. five different string theories, each competing for the title of the theory of everything. And if there's going to be a the fundamental theory of nature, there ought to be one of them. I suppose a number of string theorists thought, oh, that's fantastic, that's wonderful, and maybe one of these will end up being the right theory of the world. And yet there must have been a little nagging voice at the back of their head that said, well, why are there five? With five competing players, the stage of string theory was looking a little crowded. The five theories had many things in common. For example, they all involved vibrating strings, but their mathematical details appeared to be quite different. Frankly, it was embarrassing. How could this unified theory of everything come in five different flavors? This was a case where more was definitely less. But then, something remarkable happened. This is Ed Witten. He's widely regarded as one of the world's greatest living physicists, perhaps even Einstein's successor.